Hi everyone, thanks so much for joining us for today's Tech Talk, How to Build with Alexa for Apps. I'm James Wong, a Senior Product Manager with Alexa for Apps, and I'll be joined later today by a couple of our lead engineers, Mahal Patel and Hunter Chung. So today we'll cover the kinds of voice plus app use cases that you can enable with three developer tools, the Shortcuts API, the Shortcuts No-Code Builder, and the send -a phone API. Mahal will take us through a code walkthrough with our V2 API, and then Hunter will walk us through the no-code builder. So let's start off by talking about mobile use cases that combine the power of voice with apps. The idea here is that the customer makes a request to Alexa on their Alexa-enabled mobile accessory or Alexa built-in phone to get things done in an app or website hands-free. Intuit partnered with us on the launch of our Shortcuts no-code builder. The no-code builder lets developers create voice commands for their app without using any code. In the example above, the user asks to show what they spent last month. Ask Mint directs the request to the Mint skill, which understands that the user is interested in seeing their spending history, furthermore that they're specifically interested in last month's transactions. The skill forms the appropriate deep link because we give a signal to the skill that lets it know the request came from the customer's phone. It calls the Alexa for Apps API, which then opens the Mint app on the user's phone to show last month's transactions hands-free. Fandango is another one of our launch partners for the Shortcuts No-Code Builder. They created voice commands for their app that lets customers do things like find movies showing nearby. Note that in this case, there's no need for actual account linking since the app can use its own geolocation to determine a customer's location. Now, search is a great use case for voice, where instead of typing with your thumbs to find content that you're interested in, you can just ask Alexa. The ClassPass skill for Alexa helps you find classes, show your upcoming classes or appointments, and search for different types of workouts and more. Now, these are examples of how Alexa shortcuts voice commands work great for accessing content in apps, but they can also be used to trigger functionality to control an app. In this case, a customer asks the app to start tracking their workout. The Zoom skill for Alexa lets customers control the app with their voice. It lets them join meetings, start their own meetings, and show what's on their calendar. Now, these voice commands work great for the growing number of Alexa-enabled mobile devices. But the Alexa developer community asks us, well, what about Alexa-enabled devices in the home? such as an Echo Show, an Echo Dot, or other Echo devices. Now that's why this year we launched the new send -a phone API, which is now in developer preview. The API extends the bridge between voice and app across devices, from a device in your home over to your phone. Let's take a look at how Cookpad is using send -a phone Cookpad is the world's largest recipe community, where our mission is to make everyday cooking fun because we believe that cooking is the key to a healthier life and planet. Now with Alexa for apps, we're able to bring Cookpad and voice together in ways that weren't possible before, and that will help make everyday cooking even more fun. Alexa, ask Cookpad to find me a recipe for chicken pasta. I found chicken cannelloni. You need one hour, 30 minutes, and it's intended. For Once a user chooses a recipe, they can now get the details sent directly to their phone. Send it to my phone. I'll send Miles a link to get this recipe. You can also find it in the Alexa app. I've just sent you the recipe. This is Cookpad's first feature with Alexa for apps, but we intend to explore ideas like search results and more to bring the power of voice to our community and continue on our mission to make everyday cooking fun. Now Cookpad's use case is a great example of complementary information. After your skill provides key information to the customer by voice, you can follow that up with send -a phone to offer more detailed information found in your app or website. Now there are a couple other great use cases where connecting voice to app with send -a phone brings a lot of value to customers. With search, your skill can provide top results by voice and use Alexa for apps to send full search results to the customer's phone where they can browse, sort, and filter with touch. And a third great use case for send -a phone is completing a task. It's a great way to enable a call to action where you can direct a user to your app or website to take care of an action that might be harder to do with voice alone, like filling out a registration form. 
So under the hood, the request flow is similar to the shortcuts use case. Quest goes to the skill first, which then decides whether or not to offer a send a phone link. When it does, it sends both the Android and iOS links to the Alexa for app service using a skill connection. Now, one key difference here is that instead of automatically opening the link on the customer's phone, the customer instead gets a notification from the Alexa app. When they tap on that, that's when it opens the target app, in this case, Cookpad. Also, after sending the notification, Alexa returns control back to your skill so you can optionally continue interaction with the customer. Now we make it easier for you to create these send -a phone experiences with two convenience features. One is a new built-in send -a phone intent, which handles all the interaction modeling for things like send it to my phone or send me a link. And if your user hasn't enabled push notifications yet for your skill, we'll ask on your behalf with Alexa's recently launched voice consent feature. All you have to do is declare the permissions for send a phone in your skill manifest and our API handles the rest. Alexa for apps lets you reach highly engaged customers on hundreds of millions of Alexa enabled devices and connect them over to your apps and websites. And note that although we talked about shortcuts and send a phone use cases separately, you can actually use the same version two API to handle both use cases on iOS and Android. In addition to the API, you can also use our new no-code builder to create shortcuts voice commands for users of Alexa-enabled mobile devices in minutes with no code required. But let's start with the coding path first. Next up, one of our lead engineers, Mahal Patel, will take us through a walkthrough of how to code using the new Alexa for Apps version two API. Take it away, Mahal. Thank you, James. Hello, everyone. I'm Mihal Patel. I'm a senior software engineer here at Amazon, and I work with Alexa for Apps team. Today, I'm super excited to have you all join for this tech talk. I'm going to review some technical details of how you can enable Alexa for Apps with your custom skills. Alexa for Apps enables uh, deep linking experiences from variety of Alexa devices, and it allows your customers to be taken into your apps and websites. Before we review some technical details, let's review a small demo that I have prepared. Uh, for the purpose of the demo, I created a, sm a simple skill off of this public uh, GitHub repo. I have an Echo Dot with me, as well as, um, as you can see it on the screen, I have the Alexa app logged into the Android phone. I'm going to showcase two, uh, two primary ways through which you can uh, take your customers into your apps and websites. So let's begin. Alexa. Ask Tech Talk to search for shoes. Here's Amazon Shopping. So as you can see, um, when I asked my sample skill to search for shoes, it took me to the Amazon Shopping app, which is the app I have used for the purpose of the demo. So that's one primary way when customers are making requests from a mobile device, for example you can take them promptly to your apps and websites. For the second part of the demo, let's make a request from the Echo Dot. Echo, ask Tech Talk, what are my past orders? You currently have no orders in your order history. Would you still like to go to order history page in the shopping app? You can also say, send this to my phone. Send this to my phone. I'll send a link to your phone to see your order history. Who should I send it to? Jordan or Joe? Joe. Okay, mm -hmm. sending to Joe. Requested action is completed. Please check your mobile device for push notification and Alexa app card. Is there anything else you would like to try? No. Okay, goodbye. So as you can see, I received a push notification on my Android device, as well as I received an Alexa app card. Upon clicking the card, I will be taken into the Amazon shopping app on the orders page. Same would happen, and let's make sure we don't have the shopping app running in the background. If I were to click on the push notification, I'll be taken into the orders page. So uh, those are the two uh, primary ways you can currently take your customers into your apps and websites. Uh, with that, let's uh, do some deep dive into uh, what exact steps are required as a developer to enable these experiences. So like as a developer, there are three main touch points that you need to worry about. 
Um, number one is a skill manifest. Skill manifest basically contains all the metadata of your skills, which is used by Alexa in variety of ways to render different customer experiences. Part of the metadata that we are concerned about is the apps and website information that you should be providing that you want to deep link into. As you can see it on the screen, um, we basically ask you to provide all the linked applications which are which can be applied for your you know android as well as ios devices Optionally, you can also provide all the websites that you want to deep link into in addition to we have also enabled some um, deep linking capability for for common things that like customers typically do for example launching um, a navigation or you know making a phone call or like opening settings for details about all the schemas around apps and websites and the common schemes, please refer to the skill manifest reference guide that will give you further details. In addition to providing the apps and website information, we also ask you to add this uh, skill permission in your skill manifest. This uh, permission needs to be granted by a customer before they can receive the push notification. And lastly, you also need to declare the version of the app links that uh, your skill wants to support, which is app links v2 in your skill manifest. Now we have changed the skill manifest. Let's move on to the second step, which is to modify your skill endpoint. Alexa calls your skill with a skill request, which contains variety of information, which helps you determine which type of experience you should be able to render. Part of this payload uh, will include app link object, which signifies is deep linking experience is uh, possible unless it is absent. It has a two part information. First part uh, signifies is the version of the app link as we can see it on the example on the screen, as well as second part basically tells you what type of experience is possible. A direct launch uh, signifies is that a mobile experience is, is possible which reflects onto the first part of the demo that we saw where I made a request from the Alexa app. Whereas send to device signifies is that uh, you could send uh, links to customers' mobile devices, uh, such as when customer makes a request or from the Echo Dot like I did in the second part of the, of the demo. Um, so basically in your skill code at runtime, you would be parsing this information from, from the skill request, and then you can appropriately appropriately uh, determine whether you want to render a deep linking experience or not. In the code branches, you want to create a deep linking experience, you would need to create something called as connections request, which allows us to then actually render deep linking experience. If you look at the skill connections uh, request properties, there are four uh, main parts that are included in, in the skill connections request. Uh, number one, you need to provide information about your apps and websites that you want to deep link into. You would, you can also provide information about uh, prompts that Alexa wants to speak, as well as you have ability to suppress either of direct launch or send to device experience. Um, as part of uh, providing the deep link information, there are seven different types of deep links that you can provide. Um, for example, Android common intent, Android package, uh, common schemes like you know making a phone call, uh, website links to uh, to your websites, um, uh, custom schemes that are specific to a given application, Android custom intent that is also specific to um, uh, different applications, and then a universal link that is also website links but are um, which can be opened into a given application. So. As part of defining the connections request, you can uh, pick and choose whatever type of deep link that works best for your uh, for your uh, use case, and then um, uh, you fire off the request at runtime. If you look at the example of uh, the order history page that we saw in the demo, we can see that I provided the um, a universal link for both uh, Google and iOS, and because the app was installed and Amazon Shopping app can handle this particular type of um, uh, website links, it opened the uh, URL in the application. And I also provided the prompt, which is in the verb first format, um, which was see your order history. 
So um, once this request is fired, we basically render the deep linking experience and depending upon the success or the failure of the request, we return back control to your skill. Your skill receives the skill connections response in the form of a session resume request. Session, session, excuse me, session resume request has the two uh, sub properties, as we can see here, um, result and status. Status gives you an idea of whether overall it was a success or a failure for which you can uh, reference the uh, table provided here. Uh, the first uh, first column in particular and the result can either contain a direct launch or it can contain send to device if both of them fails then the result object might be null uh, or uh, missing depending upon the runtime language um, and you can basically examine um, these uh, two tables provided to understand overall what happened with the request in the case of um, the uh, order history page request, I got a session resume request with connection completed that had error code as all attempted, all sent, and status was success because we were able to send both activity card and uh, push notification to the customer's uh, device. Um, so to recap, there are three main things that a developer has to do at a high level. You declare all the information about your apps and websites in your skill manifest. Um, you then update your skill code to examine at runtime whether app link experience is possible or not. Um, and then uh, lastly, once desired uh, for your use cases, you create a connections request and you send out that via skill connections. Once the experience is uh, completed, either ways, you know, success or failure, we provide back uh, control to your skill, including providing the outcome of your of your request. I hope this was informative session for you guys. Please feel free to read more about how to integrate with Alexa for apps on our um, public documentation. And uh, happy learning! Thank you. All right, thanks, Mahal. Up next, our software engineer Hunter Chung will take us on a tour of the shortcuts No Code Builder that you'll find in the Alexa Developer Console once you've onboarded to our developer preview. Hi, my name is Hunter Chong. I'm a software engineer in Alexa for Apps team. I'm going to show you how to use no-code skill builder to create Alexa voice command for your apps and website. After you log in to Alexa Developer Console, go ahead and click Create Skill. For this demo, I'll use Alexa Tech Talks Shortcut Skill. In the models here, you'll find a new item, App Website. Select this one and click Create Skill. So after the skill is initialized, Alexa Developer Console will bring you to this uh, no code skill builder you'll see on the left-hand side, there are three steps to provide your app name and the details information. Select app categories and set up intent and slot types. Then you can review what you did and build a skill. That's going to step one. In this demo, I'm going to uh, use Alexa Shopping Apps as example. So I have collected the information of uh, Alexa shopping app. The first thing uh, I need to enter Google Play ID. So go back to Alexa Developer Console here. Uh, select add your Android app and paste the Google Play ID. For app name, I use Amazon Shopping. So same tricks for iOS app. Right. Copy and paste the App Store ID and use Amazon Shopping as app name. For scale invocation names, usually you should just use your app name, but for this demo purpose, I use uh, demo shopping. And uh, for the open app behavior, I also like, like open your app or website. So for Android target, I need to select the app I created 
And uh, the deep link type, in this example, I'll use uh, universal link. And I'll copy and paste the link that can open the main page of Amazon Shopping app. Same thing for iOS. Okay, so then that's all for step one. Then I can save it next. In step two, you want to choose your app categories. So we provide uh, many app, app categories so you can choose from. In this example, since it's Amazon Shopping, so I will select a shopping category. And then click Save and Next. So the app category you selected will help us to recommend you uh, building intents. We have like many building intents, but for shopping, we think these intents are more relevant to your use case. However, you can choose from other intents from other categories as well. For example, uh, communications. If your app support like a star call, then you can select a star call even if your app is not in the communication category. In the demo, I will demo a search use case. So I'll select a shopping search products. I'll go ahead to add intent. After that, I can see the intent is added here in the table and the status is not configured. So I'll go ahead to config the intent. So in this intent detail page, shows you like what, what are sample utterances customer can say and what Alexa understand. For example, customer can say, uh, ask your app name to buy a book. Then Alexa will understand like this uh, buy a book, then the book is a product in this slot. So then this like a product slot can be used into your deep link. So go to here, I'll go to add deep links for Android and select Android app. Then I'll add the Android deep links. So in the link, link types, there are like a three link, link types you can select for Androids. In this example, I'll use custom scheme. And we provide an example like a, what your custom scheme looks like, then how to construct the UI template for your custom scheme. So take Amazon Shopping, for example. The custom scheme looks like this. And it has like a queue parameters to take a query parameters, for example, like jacket. So if customer want to search for jackets, then jacket will be insert here. So to convert this deep link into UI template, I just uh, remove this uh, value and make this queue as a variable in this UI template. And I'll add the link. So after that, uh, the parameter shows as Q and you want to link a slot to this parameter. So I click link slot. And for the slot, uh, we have like a pre-built slot for this intent. So I'll select a product, which will match what I need. And for the slot, we already have a slot type search query to map to this product slot. You, are feel, you can choose other slot type as well. But in this example, it makes more sense to be a search query. So you will take whatever customers say and insert into the deep link. So since it's a search query, I don't need to provide any slot values. However, if you are using like itemized uh, slot types, then you want to provide slot values here. So Alexa can understand like what are the available slot types values. So I go ahead to click save. Then for iOS, I can go ahead to add it another like a deep link for iOS. However, like uh, assume iOS deep link is the same as Android, so I can just toggle this on, so I don't need to repeat the same thing. 
Then here are additional optional feature you can choose, like uh, what Alexa will respond when customers say from the mobile device or it is a same to phone experience than what Alexa will say. So in the demo, I'll just leave as default. So you are feel free to choose custom text. Then that's all for the intent details and I can save intent. And that's all the intents I want to add to this skill. So I'll go save it next. For slot types, uh, we don't need to do any additional configuration at this moment. So I'll just save it next. So in this page, uh, your config like uh, what can I say example phrases. When customers say as demo shopping, what can I say? Then Alexa will respond these example phrases to customers. In this case, I'll use search for jacket as example. All right, in the review page, we can do a final check what we just set up. Let's go ahead to build a skill. So we get a notification say skill build has started successfully and it takes a couple minutes to build a skill. So once the skill is built successfully, we should see another notification say complete skill build. Okay. The build complete. So after build complete, then you can go ahead to test the Alexa behavior. You can use this uh, Alexa emulator to test your skill. However, in the test tab, you cannot test undefined behavior. You can only test send to phone experience. So for example, here I'll use the sample address we have, search for jacket. will become sent to phone experience. So you will send a deep link to the device and ask for who to send to. And you can scroll down here to see it recognized as search product intent and the product slot has jacket as value. And in the JSON response here, you'll find uh, the deep link URL is this what we uh, has there uh, before and uh, q equals jacket then let's test this on device okay i have my device open and mirroring in my laptop so i'm going to trigger alexa use the same audience we have here and alexa should take us to amazon shopping app and go to search for jacket ask demo shopping to search for jacket Okay, here's Amazon Shopping. All right, so then Amazon app open and it's going to search for jacket and here are the search results for jackets. All right, that's all for my demo. Thank you. Thanks, Hunter. So if you want to try out the Alexa for Apps developer tools, sign up for our developer preview on our website at alexa.design forward slash Alexa for Apps. Also, if you're an Alexa developer or just thinking about building with Alexa, I recommend checking out our Slack community at alexa.design forward slash Slack. It's for all types of people who build with Alexa, and it's a great way to connect with a community of Alexa product and support teams and with global developers and designers. Well, I hope you've learned more about Alexa for apps developer tools in this tech talk and have been inspired to build voice plus app experiences. As always, this session was developed to help you build with Alexa and ultimately to enable customers to have better experiences every day. And we've created a survey that you can click on in the chat window to give us your feedback, how we did today, what you think about the content, and what you think we can do better in the future. Please take a couple of minutes to give us your feedback. Thanks again and happy building. We'll see you next time.